Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to another episode of our speculation series covering the next Three Kingdoms title from Creative Assembly. In this episode, I will address my favorite suggestion from the comment section of our last video on provincial management, before wrapping up with some discussions about how I would change assignments and county buildings to sort of wrap up the settlement management aspect of the game as I want to move on next week to start talking about characters. So from all the comments we have from our last episode, my favorite suggestion has to be the percentage requirement for gaining and losing government titles in any given province. Previously, I suggested that completing an entire province should give you the governor title and all the corresponding bonuses. And this definitely runs into the issue of what happens when you lose just one county in any given province after you completed it. So the suggested solution of creating a lower threshold for provincial control makes a ton of sense. Obviously, deciding that exact number for the threshold is more of an art rather than a science, but I think somewhere around the two-third range feels about right. Essentially, once you acquire two-third of a given province, you gain access to the governor title in such a province and the corresponding bonuses from said governor position. Of course, if you do manage to complete the entire province, then I feel like additional bonuses should be added to your governor as a reward. This way, losing a few counties in a war is still impactful, and anything between one-third control and two-third control is a contested period in said province where all the bonuses are gone and no side would be able to assign a governor. Now there are also a few other suggestions in regard to making the commander or the authority stat a bit more impactful for the governor position, which sounds great, but it's not something that I'm going to dwell on too much as these minor mechanics might not even fit the new game, depending on how much of a change we'll see to things like public order, population, assignments, and buildings. And speaking of these things, for this episode, I want to address assignments a bit more, as the current assignment system is a nice replacement for the typical agent system used in almost all Total War games, but it's not exactly user-friendly and could be improved tremendously. First off, assignments shouldn't have a set time limit. The one-turn deployment and the recall makes perfect sense, but why place 5 turns, 10 turns, or 15 turns as an arbitrary restriction on these assignments? Not only is this not logical, but it's also not user-friendly, as it becomes quite the memorization game for the player every few odd turns as to who had which assignment, where, and for what, which becomes even more difficult as the roster of characters and commanderies grow larger in the late game, and all of this can be solved pretty easily if assignments were all active until cancelled, meaning that players only have to shuffle assignments when a new need arises. Secondly, I believe assignments should not be tied to character class or character skill tree, but rather buildings in a set commandery. For example, if you want to collect taxes to boost peasantry income, then you must have the tax collector building. If you want to boost industry, then you must have the laborers building. Not only does this make more logical sense, it also opens up new uses for less commonly built buildings such as the school building, which can now open up new assignments to replace bad traits or learn new ones. Inn buildings can also open up new assignments to acquire new follower items as the inn is a logical place to meet new people. But going beyond this, I think not only are buildings in the main settlement central to the assignment changes, I also believe there's a role that assignments can be played for the resource counties that will also allow for more customization, player choice, a bit of extra strategy, while making the map more balanced. So my suggestion here is that instead of having a preset resource in every county, such as a farmland, fishing port, tool maker, there should be a list of potential counties that factions can choose from granted that they have full control of said commandery. Now, I'm not advocating that every county can become anything, as that would make no logical sense, but say you have a county that is coastal, then you should have control 
on whether it becomes a fishing port, focus more on food, a trade port, focus more on trade, or a military port, focus more on navy. Should we get naval combat as a new element added in the new game? While this is slightly similar to the current binary branching building chains where you could have a fishing port that gets commerce versus one that gets food, the new system can have a lot more strategic layers added to the game while maintaining a much more balanced map state. And the main culprit behind this issue are the armor smith and weaponsmith, which are buildings that should not be geographically locked to any given region, yet every single one of these counties in the current game exists in the south. In the new game, I hope this can be changed to where players can build these in any county under their full control. Now you might be thinking, wouldn't everyone just spam these everywhere and wait for items? Well no, because under the Simon system that I just suggested, having these counties only enable the option of having the assignment to gain the corresponding items. So with only a limited number of assignments, it would not make sense to spam these everywhere and just wait passively for randomized spawns. And on top of this, you can add additional layers of complexity. And on top of this, you can also add extra layers of complexity based on terrain, such as county synergies. For example, only commanderies with mountains in them can build mines, much like coastal counties can build ports. And if you decide to build an iron mine in the same commandery as your weapon or armor smith, then the quality of the weapon and armor improves from the assignment. In a similar vein, commanderies with both mountainous and coastal features can end up building powerful combinations like salt mine plus a fishing port, which will synergize together for greater food and income gains, spice market plus trade port, or a new military focused county plus the farmland to create your own twin tian system for replenishment bonuses, and much, much more. Essentially, a more flexible system that will make the game more balanced for all starting locations, while still paying respect to terrain restrictions and specializations, like certainly horse pastures should still be only available in the north and northwest, while spices and teas should be only available in the south. Of course, whenever you're adding new complex systems to a game where the vast majority of the enemy are AI factions, you run into the problem of AI misusing the mechanic or simply playing dumb. And sometimes you might run into a situation where the AI controls the south, but none of them are building T. Therefore, there are no T in the game. While this might be an issue, it is still a realistic scenario if you think about it. If set faction down south are all starving and needs food, then it makes perfect sense for them to use the fertile counties for rice instead of tea. And this will also be a great opportunity for developers to give different weighted preferences to different factions to farther distinguish them from each other. As for example, Shixie might be favoring tea and spice in order to strengthen his trade position and tributes, while Nanman factions would opt for more warlike choices when given the same counties. Or Gongsun Zan will always try to build as many horse pastures as he can, or Liu Yu might opt for more farmlands or school to help pacify the nomadic tribes. Regardless of how it ends up being implemented, I still think the options to tie assignments to buildings and to give the players more options with their county selection will make the map a lot more balanced and the game a lot more interesting and a lot less tedious with the current assignment setup. And of course, add on top of the provincial management and all the bonuses that can come from that. And hopefully we have a more robust settlement management system in the next Three Kingdoms game. And with that, we're going to be wrapping up our episode here. As I mentioned before, next time when we come back, we'll be jumping into the core of Three Kingdom games, which are the characters in the games and some of the changes I would like to see to the characters, the skill trees, the weapon systems, and how other elements that I feel are done very well in the current game should be preserved. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!